Hello students, financial assets. On this topic, this is my third video. In first two videos, I explain the meaning and types of financial assets. Let us see the characteristics of financial assets. First two videos links I am giving in the description box. First feature is intangible. Financial assets are different from physical assets. In case of physical assets, such as building, machinery, furniture, you can touch them, you can feel them. But financial assets do not have any physical form. You cannot touch them, you cannot feel them. They may be in paper form or in digital form. Come to second feature, legal agreement. For example, lender gave cash to borrower. In return, lender needs a return proof. Borrower issued one financial asset to lender as a proof. This financial asset acts as a legal agreement between borrower and lender. And this legal agreement contains value, obligation and interest, maturity period. Value. So the value which is decided between borrower and lender will be printed on this financial asset. So that value is known as face value or nominal value, instinct value, R value, printed value, symbolic value or original value. Next one, obligation and interest. Financial asset represents obligation and interest. Obligation means responsibility. It creates responsibility to the borrower. So borrower is responsible to pay the financial asset amount to the lender on a particular debt. Similarly, it represents interest of lender. Here interest means right. So lender has the right to receive some returns from borrower. For example, lender purchased share. In that case, the return to lender is dividend. He has the right to demand dividend on this financial asset. Suppose lender is one deposit holder. He deposited money with one bank by opening fixed deposit account. Then as a return proof, bank issues FDR, fixed deposit receipt. Here FDR acts as a financial asset. On that FDR, lender has the right to receive interest from banker. Third point, maturity period. In case of some financial assets, maturity period will be printed on that asset. For example, PQR Limited, a public limited company, issued redeemable preference shares on 1st January 2015 for a period of 5 years. Then, for 5 years, company can keep this amount. After completion of this maturity period means from 1st January 2015, if you count 5 years, 1st January 2020 comes. So these redeemable preferences are going to mature on 1st January 2020. On that day, company has to return the principal amount to investor. Third feature is liquidity. Liquidity means the ease with which we can convert one financial asset into cash. Some financial assets are liquid in nature. For example, treasury bills, certificate of deposits, commercial papers, commercial bills, means bills of exchange, call money, shares. All these documents easily the investor can convert into cash. For example, take shares. If shareholder wants money, then through a stockbroker, shareholder can convert that share into cash. But some financial assets are illiquid in nature. For example, life insurance policy. Like a share, you cannot sell life insurance policy through a broker. So in case of life insurance policy, if insured takes that policy for 10 years period, then he has to wait up to 10 years. At the time of maturity period only, insurance company pays the policy amount. Fourth feature is divisibility. In case of physical assets like building, machinery, furniture, dividing them into small units is not possible. Suppose a manufacturing company wants to sell its old machine. So it has to sell that machine as a whole. It cannot divide that machine into parts and it cannot sell it. But in case of some financial assets, there is a possibility of divisibility. For example, take shares. Ravi purchased 
1000 shares of abc limited now ravi wants to sell these shares he can sell all these 1000 shares or he can sell only a part of this for example 600 shares he can sell to somebody remaining 400 shares he can keep with him fifth one risk versus returns while lender is investing money in financial assets he is expecting some returns if he purchases shares he expects dividend if he purchases debentures, bonds, etc., he is expecting some interest. Now, there is a direct relationship between risk and returns. If lender takes more risk, he will get more returns. If he takes less risk, returns will be low. For example, lender is investing in treasury bills. Treasury bills are issued by government, means 0% risk will be there. As lender is not taking any risk, he cannot expect more returns on treasury bills. Similarly, suppose the investor lender is depositing money with the banker. So this is also 100% safest investment. So there is no risk here. Therefore, banker doesn't pay much interest to lender. Suppose lender is investing in share market. So investing in shares is risky because for dividend, for principal amount, there is no guarantee and market value of this share fluctuates if company's performance is not good so the market value may fall means investor is taking more risk here therefore if everything goes well investor can earn more returns on shares sixth one less handling cost in the context of financial assets handling cost means what selling and buying cost for example, borrower wants to sell one financial asset or lender wants to buy one financial asset. So the selling and the buying of financial assets is very simple. That is why most of the financial assets are considered as liquid assets. They are treated as near money. So as easily we can transfer the securities to other person, handling cost will be less. Next point, convertibility. Some financial assets have this option. They can be converted into another class of financial asset. For example, take convertible preference shares or convertible debentures. So after a particular period, the investor, the shareholder or debenture holder can convert their preference share or debenture into equity share. For example, ABC Limited issued convertible debentures on 15th April 2011. And the company mentioned on the debenture document that after seven years, the debenture holder can convert them into equity shares. So from this date, if you count seven years, the date will be 15th April 2018. So after this date, debenture holder gets the option of converting them into equity shares. After conversion, he will be treated as an equity shareholder and all equity shares related rules are applicable to his holdings. Eighth one is tax. Some financial assets give tax benefit to the investor. For example, mutual funds, life insurance policies, government bonds. So investor we can avail tax benefit on the income which is generated from this type of financial assets. But some financial assets are taxable. For example, investor purchase shares. So the income for him is dividend. Dividend is taxable income. Otherwise, investor deposited some amount with the bank in the form of FD. So the income which is generated from fixed deposit is taxable income. Ninth point is security. By pledging these financial assets as security, investor can avail loan facility. Thus, financial assets can be used as a security against loans. Now come to the last point of this video. Tenth feature is predictable returns. In case of financial assets, investor can predict the returns. For example, take bank deposits, debentures, preference shares. Investor can know how much interest or how much dividend he is going to earn. Even in case of equity shares also, don't think that investor blindly invest in that. Up to some extent, he can predict the dividends. So these are the features of financial assets. So hope this video is helpful to you. Thank you.